Hey everyone, Jiří here and in this video I will explain you how you can use Supernova delivery platform to deliver your tokens or your assets into your code bases automatically. Now what do you see here on the screen is store. In the store you will obtain something that we call exporters. And I think it is important to explain what the exporters are before we move any further. So exporters at its base are basically transformers. They take data from your design system and they transform it into something else. Now the data can be many things. It is literally everything that you have inside the design system. So it can be tokens, it can be styles, it could be also assets, even the components or even the documentation in many cases. Now the way that you use exporters is actually very simple. Let's say that I would like to export a CSS code and I have it constantly delivered into my code base as long as I am adding new tokens. Right? So I would like to basically create end-to-end -end delivery where the tokens come from Figma or I create them inside Supernova or maybe they are imported from some other source and they are delivered to my code base in the case that you will see into the GitHub repository. So how would I do this? How would I start with something like this? Well, we need few parts. We need to select the exporter that we would like to use or actually create your own one. The exporters are fully customizable. All of them are open source. And if you don't have exporter that we ship with, you can actually go and create one yourself just using JavaScript and a little bit of templates that we provide you. Now, what I would have to do uh, because I am interested in CSS code specifically, the very first thing that I would do, I would just install this exporter. I, I am interested in CSS, so it makes sense. I'll install this and what it will do, it will make this exporter available to everyone in my workspace. Now, if I would create my own exporter, you know, maybe fork a default exporter and modify it a little bit so it produces a, just a slightly different code that uh, the default one produces, then I would also be able to install a new exporter just from my repository that backs such an exporter. So I would click new and then I would just add a URL and I would have my own exporter. So you are not limited to only uh, exporters that you see inside the store, but you are also able to fully customize them and also create some new ones. For example, if you are using some unsupported technology or even some proprietary technology, proprietary framework that no one else but your company knows about. So how would you be used such a CSS exporter? Now we have installed this, which means that it is available inside the workspace, but we still need to somehow run this exporter, right? And that involves two parts. It involves setting up automation, basically telling the exporter where it should be delivered or where the exported code should be delivered, that is. And also it involves just adding some data into the design system. So let's do both of those things, starting with actually setting up the automation. So what I would do here is I would go to hooks, which is our observer basically. Hooks are our observers that are watching events inside your design system. And I will set up new hook, which will allow me to basically observe a specific event that is happening inside my design system and then run a specific exporter that I have installed into my workspace based on that hook. So I will name this hook a CSS delivery and you can name it, name it however you want to. And I will target a design system. As you can see, I have few design systems, but I want to use this one, uh, the one where we will be importing the data. And I also have to select the event. Now you have choice of three events. The first one is that you will trigger the code generation or the exporter with every version released. Now Supernova is versioned and there is a video explaining how the versioning works. So every time you would create a new version, we would run this code generation. This is really useful in very stable design systems where you are over time working on you know, gra gradual improvements. And then when you are ready to publish this into your code bases, uh, you are ready pu to publish the documentation and so on, you would just like to trigger this once. So we will not be, do we will not be doing this uh, for the purpose of this demo, but it is an option that especially more mature design systems will use. Now we also have source updated. 
This event is watching Figma specifically or any design upstream source. And when that source changes, we will trigger this as well. So you can imagine that you will you are able to basically create end-to-end -end workflow where we are watching your publishing in Figma and you publish a new version and we will trigger this hook, this code automation on your behalf when this happens because we will obtain a new data from Figma. But for the purpose of this demo, I actually want to go wild and use the third option, which is head changed. Now, head changed basically observes any event inside your design system. This is ideal when you are testing this integration because anything that you do inside the design system with a little bit of delay will actually trigger the code generation again. So you can add a new token inside Supernova and it will immediately run the code generation and maybe deliver just one token into your code base. You change something in the assets and new assets gets propagated. So this is ideal for our demo and I will use this now. So I will select the head changed and I will select the exporter. Now, I only installed the CSS exporter. I also have the ability to export the documentation as an offline target if I want to, but I am interested in CSS code, so the CSS will do. And if you have installed more, more exporters than just one, for example, you would install the CSS and Android and iOS and React, you have multiple code bases, you will see all of them here. But keep in mind that you can always only create one hook or one, uh, one combination of design system, event and the exporter uh, per one hook. You can, of course, however, have unlimited number of hooks. So you can imagine that uh, you can, for example, from one design system, deliver code in different shapes and forms uh, into multiple repositories at the same time. So I would just create CSS exporter, uh, commit this or uh, confirm this. I would uh, click new again. I would select, say, Android exporter, link this to Android repository. And I would have two hooks that would be propagating the data at the same time if I have selected the same event. So now we have this configured, but we actually need to provide one other step. And this is the method of the delivery that you prefer um, to have for your code base. Now there are several options how you can deliver the code into your code bases. And we should go through this right now. So the very first option that you have here is simply don't do anything. We'll just generate the code and you have it available inside Supernova. You would find it in the in the build step, which is basically a list of all the code generation requests that you have done inside Supernova. And you can download a code from a secure storage that we are keeping for you. Now, this is sometimes useful for backups and so on. However, I would say that uh, for me as a developer, I would always opt for some other choice, which is either that we open a pull request and we maintain a pull request that we constantly are appending to, or that we will trigger some sort of API and send you basically a ping when the code generation finished through your REST API. Now for the purpose of this demo, I would like to show you opening a GitHub pull request because I have a repository prepared here that is empty and I would like my CSS to go there. So what I will do, I will select a open GitHub pull request. And if you haven't logged in with your GitHub, uh, there will be a login view, but I've already done this. So I'm logged in with my own personal account. As you can see, uh, it's Yiri's organization, which is my organization. And then I have a list of repositories that I have access to. There is quite a lot of repositories that I have uh, available uh, either privately or publicly inside my organization, but I specifically want to target this CSS export uh, repository that I have created for this purpose. Now I also have to select a branch to which we will be committing. This repository was just created, so I only have the main branch, but you would probably opt for something else like a development branch or something that you will specifically create for Supernova. Now the last part is uh, a path to which you want to send the code. Now the exporters themselves define a structure of the code. So you can change uh, folders and you can change the structure of the files that gets generated and so on. It's fully customizable. But this specific path actually registers our route where we should uh, start writing the files. So what I want to do is I want all the files to start 
with uh, design system. So when we will create this request, we will actually put all the files into slash design system and then slash whatever the exporter defines should be the path for those files. You know, maybe there will be multiple files at the same time. So they will at least start in the design system and I will keep my repository nice and tidy. So I will confirm this. And now we have created a hook that is active. It is enabled right away. And we need to trigger this hook. Now the hook doesn't trigger automatically. It actually triggers only off of the event uh, that we have set. But fortunately, we have set the event so it's had changed. So it can be literally anything. But I think for the purpose of this demo, we should do something actually really concrete. So I want to fill the data from the, uh, with the styles coming from Figma or with the styles coming uh, from something that we will create inside this design system manually. So I will go to design systems and I will select the my dreamy design system that I have targeted by this hook. I will go to Figma and in here I have the color palettes that I've been using throughout this series. Also some typographies, uh, maybe some icons and so on. I'll copy paste the link to this file so I can link this into my Supernova account or into my design system. I will copy paste it and also ideally I will enable the automatic updates because if I do this and I push something into Figma, we will pick this automatically and this end to end tool chain uh, or end to end delivery pipeline really uh, will trigger automatically as well, which is really nice because like imagine that uh, you just receive an email, hey, you have your new icons, your new tokens available. And it was just because a designer basically published a new version of Figma library, right? So it's very powerful technology that can be fully automated end to end. Now I will link this file uh, and let the file import all the data. So now you can see that we have imported quite a lot of styles. We have some colors and typographies coming from Figma. So I suggest we look at the repository, but there was some change. I'll switch back to the repository. And indeed you can see that there is now a new pull request open. So let's open that. And you can see that there was a pull request opened a minute ago by Supernova IO bot. So let's open this pull request. Let's see what the files, uh, what files has been changed. Now you can see that there has been a new push into this repository, which says updated styles and tokens. It sounds good. Uh, and if I switch to files change, you can see it generated some of the new files for the design system in the directory slash design system, which is what I have said. Now there are no borders inside the, that uh, repository. So uh, this is indeed correct, but for the colors, you can see that there has been a lot of colors added. For example, there has been also a lot of uh, typographies added, which are classes and so on. So this seems like we have generated and also saved quite a lot of uh, time and work really just by basically automating the pipeline. But let's see if this system is smart enough. So we can also do some modifications and some diffing. So what I will do, I will review the changes. I think it's great. Uh, I believe our bot, so I will approve this. And now I will merge this pull request, which will make this into basically a base of this code base. Right? So now I have a one directory called design system. And in this, I have the CSS files. Now, what is really important to note, um, and I will probably repeat myself, but it's really important. Uh, you can fully customize how this structure looks like. You can also fully customize how the content looks like. Um, and we'll have the entire series dedicated to basically customizing the exporters, uh, building them from scratch and so on. But for now, we are using this exporter, which has those definitions. But just know that it is fully possible to, for example, generate just one file or even more granular files. You can generate style dictionary definitions. You can generate everything you want as long as it can be described as data into something using JavaScript, which is not usually very hard. Now I have this uh, commit done, which is great. So we have the initial view of the design system. 
but now I would like to continuously deliver new changes into the code base, right? So what I will do, I'll go back to the cloud and maybe I would like to create a new border. So let's see uh, what we can do with this. I'll create a new measure, which represents a width of the border. So I'll create uh, just width. We don't have to spend too much time on this. Uh, there is another dedicated video for the token management. And I will say the width of something will be five pixels. Uh, I don't need the custom properties at this point. So I'll confirm this and I have five pixel width. And also I will create a new border which will use those information. So I will use a border that um, is maybe blue. And also I will use I will use the measure that I just created. So it will be border of five pixel. I will name this a developer published right now border. Very creative, I think. So I'll confirm this and we have a new border which pulls the data from Figma and it uh, uses the color and also pulls the data from Supernova and uses the measure. So now let's go back into the CSS export and you will see what will happen. So let's refresh this repository really quickly. We have another pull request opened, a pull request number two this time. And in this pull request, you can see that there are actually two comments because I have said that this experimental or this test mode where um, you create the head change actually really reacts to every change. So I have created one token, which was one change and it created one commit. Uh, I've created another one and it created another commit, fortunately into the same pull request. So we'll be just appending one pull request that is opened will be not polluting, of course, your design system. So you can just be continuously getting the data. And then once you are ready, you can just go merge pull request. It is all done. And now you can see that this pull request adds two pieces of information. So let's go to files changed. You can see that inside the measure CSS, we have a measure width, which is indeed the five pixel. And we also have the border developer published right now border. Um, not very great, not really great name, I have to say, uh, but it will do. And this border this time in the CSS definitions actually uses the measure of it as a variable and also uh, the blue color definition that was already defined inside this design system. If I would bring this to a production, I would change this hook so it either reacts to version released or it reacts into or it, it reacts to uh, the other source changed. So uh, whenever the data is coming from Figma or whenever the data is coming from some other source or whenever a version is released. So we are not spamming the code base too much. However, if you are testing, I would strongly recommend that you use that head changed. And then when you are ready, you just switch to something more stable. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. It is extremely powerful technology and you can combine this delivery. Uh, you can create more than just one code integration, more than just one hook. So for example, if I would like to start with Android delivery, I would just install this, create another hook uh, and select the Android exporter because we, I have one extra Android exporter and I would create this, repeat this cycle again, but for a different repository. And then the code generation would run from one single source of truth, but to two destinations, which is in my opinion, pretty awesome. You can do this for tokens. You can do this for assets as well. And soon you will be able to do this for components as well. I thank you for watching. I really hope that you liked this and I will see you in the next video.